Okay, so when you look at the agency, the first thing you want to think about really is this relationship between the client and the agency. So the client is the party that has the product or the service that they want to promote, that they want to get out there and sell, and they're the ones who are going to be uh, coming up with the funding. Um, the agency then is the party that's responsible for the creation, the promotion, and also the placement of the actual communication messages. So a lot of times the agency would also work in other areas like in production, but uh, those are the two parties that we're thinking about. Then there are other parties like media organizations, broadcast networks, social media platforms. So these are kind of like the places where um, the message would be channeled or you know, you'd be able to reach your target audience. There are many specialized marketing services like direct marketing, sales promotion, digital agencies, public relations firms. So those are the ones that are going to be kind of niche where they specialize in a certain area. Then the idea of organizations that might provide collateral services. So you might have an organization that specializes, say, in video production or in photography, where you would contract out to that agency to get the best video, um, the best research. Maybe you need a focus group, uh, something like that, that would actually um, kind of bolster your overall marketing plan. So although there are lots of specialized agencies, overall, many agencies have kind of eaten each other up and there are the big four, the super agencies, WPP, Omnicron, Publicis, and the Interpublic Group. These are the four global kind of giants in the industry. So there are different structures within the agencies. Um, the idea of a centralized structure might be something like this where you know, we have all these different departments that basically are under one CEO or one president and then a, an account manager who would um, kind of uh, handle or, you know, integrate or liaison between all of the different departments to make sure that the client is satisfied. In a decentralized model like this, you would have uh, lots of specialists again who um, basically are working together to fulfill that common goal. And again, we have some type of brand manager here who would be responsible for the overall uh, coordination. There's also the idea of in-house agencies. So this is where um, a corporation would do all the services themselves. So they would have their own uh, creative, their own uh, media buying, and their own production, uh, all under their own auspices. So they don't have to contract out, they can uh, control everything in-house. So a good example of this is Jaguar and uh, Land Rover have their own agency called Spark 40. So each structure has its advantages and disadvantages, and um, the idea, I think, the bottom line is you really want to make sure that you go to the right agency to get the job done that you need. And uh, a lot of it is experience. So the reason why you're going to an agency as opposed to doing it in-house is that you want the expertise. It's kind of like I can do first aid at home or I can go to a specialist like a hospital or a doctor. Where are you gonna get the better care? Uh, at some point, you know, you can put a Band-Aid on it, but if you really want it done right, you're going to have to go to the source. So the advantage of working with an agency, obviously, is this breadth of experience, these uh, specialized skills, this viewpoint uh, oversight of the market, and um, again, other specialties, like some agencies specialize, say, in travel or in digital. Um, so you're really calling upon them to bring you that wealth of experience as opposed to trying to do everything yourself. Traditionally, there's been a full service industry model where the ad agency would basically take the promotion from the ground up, doing the research in the market, coming up with a strategic plan, actually producing the media, 
and then buying the time to promote and put those advertisements online, on air, uh, in print, whatever it is. So the idea is that this is a traditional model. Some people consider it a kind of dinosaur. So you can see from this organizational chart that it's a lot of different pieces that come together from the planning to the production to the buying to then evaluating how effective the media is, dealing with clients, financial, uh, making sure you get paid, your bottom line. Um, so a lot of those things you know, might be um, hard to do in today's environment. So typically a strategy starts with research and the idea of um, gathering data about the market and the services, the competition, and analyzing that data so that you can really be effective. An account planner puts together um, all of the client's information, their objectives, their goals, their uh, kind of past experiences, um, so that we can really put together a marketing plan looking at the big picture. And then the media department analyzes um, the overall kind of channels of distribution to know where the target market is and how to effectively plan out that budget and make sure that you know any money that's being put to buy time on a certain channel or um, print ads or radio or social media is going to be effective. It's really going to reach that target audience. Then we have the heart of the matter, the creative department. So in a lot of ways, this is really the big idea, the thing that sets you apart and makes your product the unique selling proposition that's going to set you apart from all the other competition out there. Um, copywriters put together the wordsmithing for your ad, um, the art department, the look, the graphic design of your ad, whether it be in print or on social media, web or video production. Um, then the actual production, you know, the nuts and bolts of actually producing that commercial or that ad. And the traffic department kind of uh, coordinates all the phases as something comes from the script to the final distribution. Obviously, the bottom line, too, on these things is management. So, you know, you got to make sure that you're going to be making money. So making sure that your billing is going through, the finance um, is uh, the return on investment is soluble and um, solvent and you know the right people are working on the right thing so human resources um, just the basic operation it doesn't have to be advertising this is any business needs to have this kind of um, management built into it to make sure that you're going to actually uh, make money and not go out of business there are many smaller agencies that specialize just on the creative side. So these are sometimes called boutique agencies, and they may be the ones who are just coming up with that big idea. Obviously, creativity is something that is very subjective. Um, it's something that you really can't kind of learn in a book. You really have to have uh, kind of a, a, a pension for it. So uh, the smaller boutique agencies might come up with the big idea, but then you've got to go to another agency to actually then produce and buy the media and act, you know, actually execute it. So you might then again consider specialized agencies that might specialize just in media buying, um, strategy, um, the idea of using technology. So you might have an agency that specializes just in digital just in web, just in direct marketing. Um, so um, the idea of every agency kind of having its own unique strengths. Show me the money. So let's take a look at how agencies actually get paid. Traditionally, a commission system, which worked at about 15% of whatever media was bought. So if a spot cost $100,000 to air, then the agency would get $15,000 um, looking at that kind of commission system. If you have a lot of ads, a lot of times that could be negotiated down. So a kind of a sliding scale where the more ads 
um, the client places with the agency, then the cheaper it gets. So instead of 15%, it might go down to even 10 or even 8%, depending on the volume. There's also agencies that use a fixed fee method. So that would be something where a basic monthly fee would be charged um, no matter what. And um, there could be combinations of that too. So maybe you have the fixed fee, but you also have some type of commission based on things like, well, sales really went up beyond a certain point, and then the agency would be able to get more uh, compensation based on that. Another variation is this incentive base, where um, the more the agency does for you, the more they make. So the more your metrics go up, the more the agency actually is being effective, then they would actually make more um, based on their commission then. Agencies themselves have to reevaluate their own work to make sure that with budgets getting tighter, um, that the clients are going to be happy with spending less and getting more. Um, the idea that, you know, say an agency buys a lot of media, um, they might get discounts from the media organizations that then they don't pass on to their clients. And this is another way that they can actually make more money. So. So evaluating the effectiveness of the agency is a lot of times very subjective. I mean, you can look at the financial model where you say, okay, you know, what did I actually pay for here? How many hours, you know, what did I buy? How many, you know, what, what the cost of the ad actually was to place on air? Um, or you can look at a qualitative, you know, what was the real results from the ad? Um, did sales go up, metrics? Um, so a lot of times you can pay a little and get a lot from an effective agency. So a good agency uses a lot of people skills, a lot of soft skills to make sure that they are benefiting their client in more ways than just, you know, selling widgets or whatever. The idea of really the kind of brand management, the, you know, building in that kind of public relations, the overall uh, big picture kind of. How do agencies get their clients and sometimes even lose their clients? Um, a lot of it might be a referral. So the idea that clients come in from existing clients, uh, even from other agencies sometimes, solicitations, maybe making you know cold calls, uh, following up on other leads, um, presentation. A lot of times you might be called in to make a bid. So I have a product that I want to uh, advertise and I bring in a few agencies and have them pitch to me. So the idea of having good presentation skills, uh, putting together a package that might be impressive. Um, public relations, um, you know, is an agency viewed in a positive light. You know, they've done charitable work or um, what are their past clients, their past uh, kind of reputation, their uh, successes. Let's take a look at some of the specialized agencies. So we have direct marketing. Um, traditionally, it was um, snail mail marketing. So things like direct mail, flyers, brochures, catalogs. Um, today, a lot of it is digital. So things like email marketing is huge, um, web marketing, and then database management. So knowing who you are. So maybe you buy something and then you fill out some type of form or you fill out some type of subscription that then tailors the next advertisements that you'll receive, the next email that you'll receive. So being able to manage that database is a key component in a direct marketing uh, agency. Another type of agency is sales promotion. So the idea of using contests, sweepstakes, um, coupons, in-store uh, advertisements, buy one, get one free. All of these are parts of sales promotion. Public relations firms use a brand identity where, you know, instead of actually marketing the product, they're kind of marketing the image of the company. So just think Apple. A lot of you said Apple was one of your favorite brands. Um, okay, we can market, you know, a particular pair of earbuds or an iPhone or a MacBook but the idea is the overall feel that you get from the brand is part of what a public relations firm is looking for. 
a public relations firm may strike publicity. They may sponsor special events around a product or service. They may conduct research. Um, again, it's all based on this overall idea of the brand's perception by the public. With the expansion of the internet and digital technology, a lot of agencies specialize just in online marketing where, you know, it's web design, it's video today, you know, the idea of having um, video on YouTube, Facebook, Instagram, Snapchat uh, as a really effective form of communication, uh, mobile marketing, uh, text messages, all these kind of digital uh, areas are key to this type of agency. And then reviewing some of the collateral services again, um, you know, doing research, uh, coming up with data and being able to analyze that data. Specialty uh, areas like um, photography and video production, um, talent, event marketing, all these areas are tangentially related um, and can support the overall feel of your campaign. So what's the agency of the future going to look like? They're going to have to have these seven areas. Um, be accountable, be sustainable, be ethical, um, be uh, adaptable to the ever-changing uh, marketplace and landscape of the media environments, being able to be a good communicator, having good people skills, being able to collaborate and um, be a leader, be uh, a team uh, player. Obviously, that's a kind of catchphrase you might put on your resume, but show me the money. What, show me how you actually use it. Um, being able to handle um, the ever-changing technology. Um, uh, obviously, having a good track record, a good return on investment. Um, being expert in new areas like uh, artificial intelligence. Being creative, being innovative and also coming in competitively price-wise. So I wanna close with a couple of things that I want you guys to actively do here, the call to action. Um, so log on to your LinkedIn account and become a member of the FIT uh, AMC Student Network. Um, this is where we network with students. We keep them apprised of industry changes, trends. I'm gonna post a job listing today for a social media manager. And uh, you know, this is the way we get things out there. Someone you know who I do business with tells me, "Hey, you know, I need a, I need a new uh, intern, or um, you know, I've got a job available." Um, I would post those things on our LinkedIn page. So become a member. Check out the ANA, the Association of National Advertisers. Um, again, you know, becoming part of their group, subscribing to their material. They have free training. Um, they have uh, networking uh, perks, so um, I would say that would be definitely something I would like you to do. Okay, so two other resources are Ad Age and Ad Week. Both of them are, I think, great ways for students to stay on top of industry trends, opportunities, and network. So um, both of them have free subscriptions, but also paid subscriptions, depending on you know, the level that you want to take. I hope you enjoyed the lecture. Um, the Easter egg will be to send me a message um, saying that you joined the uh, FIT Advertising Marketing Communications Student Network.